Okay, we're going to look at some more slides here, and I've kind of given the card away because I think I've already talked a little bit about this. Funds received in the connection of an escrow transaction must be deposited in an escrow account unless the parties to the escrow transaction, i.e. the buyer and the seller, agree in writing to some other arrangement. Um, the only time that would happen typically is if that escrow money Sorry, my throat's hurting a little bit. It's not cash. Uh, I did a real estate transaction years ago where we actually took title to a Lincoln Navigator rather than money. My seller knew it in advance. It was okay. And we held that, obviously, as the lender or as the <laughs> lender. I'm not even close to being a lender. As the uh, listing agent in our safe. So that would be a situation. Maybe there was an, a, another agreement that we didn't use earnest money. So that obviously wouldn't be put into an escrow account. Okay. So it's possible to do that. Now, the closing agent may not make any disbursements from the escrow account with the real estate transaction unless the funds are received from any single party to the real estate transaction. And the wired funds that total at least 10000 are unconditionally held by an irrevocable credit to the escrow account. So if all of the earnest money was given by one person and the deal didn't close, they can disperse it back to that person. Okay. This applies to any other funds that are less than $10,000 and are under the good funds law. This is what I was talking about a minute ago, Bob. I said occasionally the disbursement usually comes out when? When's the most common time that you guys would assume a disbursement from a title company would happen? Right, at closing. They're going to disperse a bunch of money. They're going to pay off the uh, seller's mortgage. That's a disbursement. They're going to give the seller the proceeds. That's a disbursement. They may pay any of the other companies like the appraisal company or the lender for doing their things, those are disbursements. Now, in a case where it doesn't close, they actually have the right to disperse it back to a single individual that put the money in if the deal doesn't close. This also applies to one that maybe has escaped your thought, would be ones if the lender has sent the money to the title company and it doesn't close, they need to disperse the money back to the lender, okay? Uh, now, the mortgage holder's right to receive proceeds. The mortgage holder, now this would be the seller's current mortgage, has the right to receive proceeds from a transaction through funds that are electronically transferred to a specific account or specified account. This would be what we, and I'm using finger quotes for you online, but you guys can see this. <laughs> It's funny when you do this and then say finger quotes because you guys looking at me think I'm crazy. Um, the payoff, all right? So the mortgage holder has a right to receive the payoff. The closing agent in a real estate transaction receives wire money uh, held and held and they credit the escrow account or the holder of a mortgage lien encumbers real estate makes this request as part of a written closing instructions or written payoff statement in advance of the closing. So when the goes to close, the title company will contact the current seller's lender and say, hey, what does the current seller owe on this property as of you know November, November 7th, whatever the date is? That lender will then send a payoff statement or mortgage reduction certificate back to the title company and say, on this date, they owe blah, 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 blah. And here's the instructions on how to send us, i.e. wire us, that payoff money. We want it to go to a special account uh, that we only use for payoffs. And they will once again give a closing instructions to the closing officer on how that mortgage company is to receive those proceeds from the sale. Now, occasionally, I have never seen this happen, honestly, but there is a rule that allows a closing agent to advance some of the money, cannot exceed $500 from an escrow account, 
on behalf of one of the parties, typically like a buyer, for the purpose of paying off some incidental fees, which include the conveyance and the recording. Why they would pay in advance, I don't know. I've never seen this. I've never seen them. Perhaps they're paying off the appraiser and the lender wants to pay the appraiser before the closing. They could advance some money. Such incidental fees may be paid in order to affect and close the sale. Like the appraiser won't come off the appraisal until he gets paid. Um, I said sale and also purchase, exchange, transfer, lease, or any of the other encumbrances. Uh, maybe there is a small lien that is owed that the seller didn't know, like uh, maybe one year's HOA. I'm just making an example here. And it can be paid in advance so that that HOA will sign off on the sale. Okay. So that is uh, the advance of fees. I, I'll tell you right now, I've never seen a title company advance earnest money because there's always that chance that something doesn't happen, i.e. the closing doesn't happen. So it's possible. I've never seen it happen. I've never seen it in advance. I've seen lots of closings not happen. <laughs> I first said that and Mary, you were looking like I was crazy. No, Mary. A lot of closings don't happen. Not a lot. Some. But I've never seen a title company advance earnest money or escrow money held in their account to facilitate the closing they typically just say, okay, you got money in earnest. Now you got to go pay that off as well. And that's just a fee they're going to come up with. Okay.